personally, we'll have a quick look back over that game against Ipswich Town on Tuesday night. What were you feeling? Still the same as at full time? Yeah, pleased, pleased, um, pleased with the performance. Pleased we got something to show for for the efforts. Um, almost a heartbreaking moment with a ricochet and a deflection and going behind, and then a moment of real quality to to get something out of the game. But I think most people who watched it or attended it felt we deserved something out of the game. Um, minimum a point. Had a couple of good chances in the second half. Sean Morrison's header, Georgie Kelly's one on one, um, and limited a very good team to that half chances. A lot of possession and pressure, of course, um, but our keeper wasn't overworked. I know you're disappointed with a couple of the, the moments with the goals, but how far away from an ideal performance was that? Because it was very good across the park. Well, look, you can go into depth of any game and, and nitpick certain moments. Um, just the magnitude of a couple of um, understanding bits, I suppose. Be, you know, everyone could sense where the danger was on that free kick. Um, we, we've covered it with the group, and that's always a staffing responsibility as well, just to to see the danger and almost release out from your natural or, or ass position. Um, our markers were on top of our zone players and, and all tight around Victor and. The, you know, the, the player who had the most amount of time was on the edge of the box, a dangerous position. So we'll certainly take responsibility of that. But then an understanding of what's needed at each moment in the game. Um, and, I, and only really my frustration in that second half was the lead up to, to their second goal was we had the opportunity to put the ball in the box. When we did during that second half period, we looked threatening. And we, we have done recently. So um, game management, I think everyone calls it. Um, that's the buzzword. Um, but in terms of what the players put into the game, so, so important. They saw a performance of that level and got some reward. You've spoken many times about bright starts in games, both home and away. You got just that, and I suppose it, it hits on the point and gives you a real platform to go out, doesn't it? It does. Um, you know, the goals change the feel of it. Um, they change games, of course, they do, but the whole feel of the stadium, the atmosphere, um, the way our players conduct themselves, um, the way they feel about their own game, um, that's down to you to ask Fred if he if it was a shot or a cross, um, but it was it went across the goal, which we've been asking for from all those attacking positions. And Sam did what he generally does, has been in the right place at the right time. Um, and it just got us in the right place in the game. We felt on the front foot, we felt in a good place. Their equalising goal was a, a bit of a blow. Um, and then we have to respect how the game panned out from that point of view. Um, we were playing against a quality team. There's a reason why they've been beaten once this season, only drawn a couple of, day, a couple of games. Um, and we, we, we more than tested them um, and held our own as well so a good confidence booster um, but now we have to back that with away performance you've been very complimentary of the fans throughout the season but you've spoken about how you need to give them something to hang on to something to get behind you did that a number of times on Tuesday night yeah well, we've, we've, we're trying to do that and we generally have done at home <laughs> I think that's a, a fair assessment of it and um, well done to the ones who stayed after Ipswich scored their second goal because at least they got to witness that moment for us and to share it with us and our players got to share it with them that's important we have to keep believing in, in each other even when we go behind in the, the 90th minute of the game against second in the league we still have to believe we've got something left to give um, and we showed that on on Tuesday night so well done to those who, who stayed and well done to those who in, in good voice as well um, generally our home performances have been up the level we'd expect to be at and um, we know we've got to get our away fans excited about going away from home and um, never do I want to hear a, an away fan saying or uh, a, a Rotherham fan saying oh another away game and um, we've been awful away from home and we've not picked up enough points so we have to change that pretty quickly um, and we'll do that by performing at the weekend Bad strikers knocking on your door for a start. Georgie Kelly got the goal. Sam Nombe scored on Tuesday night. Really good to see that you have got those touch options at that end. Of the yeah, um, and, and players in, in a good state of mind, um, feeling good about themselves. We, we, we kind of know where we feel George is in terms of his impact and what he can do to games. And he did that the other night as well. Um, played a part in the, the, the lead up to Chris's equaliser. So it's important they keep on battling out Tom Eves as well, um, all fighting for the same thing, which is an opportunity to start and to perform. Um, Football, as I always say, is a very easy game for myself as manager. If you play well, you've got a very good chance of starting the next game and staying in the team. Um, it's a performance-based uh, life we lead. Um, and it was good to see Sam perform on, on Tuesday. Jordan affected, Georgie Kelly's affected recently. They're all pushing. Um, I want them to keep on pushing each other on a daily basis out on a training pitch. And then whoever's selected, give it absolutely everything. On the subject of Sam, we've spoken about how big a step up to the Championship is. But on Tuesday night, it was really a complete performance, wasn't it? Had had the goal, he was pressing all over the place, holding the ball. You must have been pleased with where he's got to. Yeah, he, he looked ready. Um, maybe previously he hasn't quite been ready or, or the team haven't allowed him to be ready by the way we played. Um, people forget he started a couple of other games, but starting games where you don't get the service or if his game's on the halfway line with, with defenders outnumbering him and jumping all over him, then he, there is a rawness still to his game. 
but when you're allowed to run like he did on on Tuesday and disrupt, um, I'm, I'm just be a constant pest. That's why we, we, it was a perfect game for him. Um, and the goal changes the way people see him and the way he feels about himself. So, you know, he's got to keep on putting himself forward. Um, but also his personality started to show for probably the first time Rotherham fans and, and maybe someone in the squad I've seen his personality, which which I've seen for a long time now, which is infectious. Um, it's all in, it's all action. Um, it's not perfect in any way, but it gets the fans going. So hopefully I'll see more of that. And you mentioned that strikers more than anyone else on the pitch seem to thrive off that adrenaline of the goals and then go on to score more goals. You feel like that's going to be the case with Sam? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned centre forward. I mean, there's no better feeling in football um, than scoring a goal. There's no better feeling. Now, that's a, a selfish thing to say, but that was the greatest feeling you have as a professional footballer is when you put the ball in the back of the net and it's it's your moment and you own it and it's you know partly down to your teammates, of course it is, but that's special feeling. Um, and centre forwards are judged on that, so the outside world will always judge on your, your goals per minute ratio and are they performing in front of the goal? Are they look, do they look like they're scoring goals? Um, the fact that it was early and a good goal for, for Sam and Fred's part in it um, really gave him a boost. So, you know, like it, I want them to bottle up the good feelings they've had recently. Um, and we've got now options of partnerships, of pairings, of two, of three. Um, Sam has actually shown he can play on the outside of the pitch as well as central. So I'm pleased with the, the, the group we've got there. Um, I want to keep being pleased by him pushing. And those endorphins then have been shared out a bit recently. Sam got his first goal, Georgie's first goal. And Chris T as well, it's, it's good that they're coming in from all over the pitch. Right? Yeah, I keep saying to Chris, he, he should smile more. And people say to say me, I should smile more, which is probably, probably true. <laughs> probably the misses more than anyone else. But... Um, he, 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 I want him to enjoy his football. Um, his actual strike in the first half was a, you know, it was a close strike. It's gra almost graves the crossbar. So maybe it was one of those games where he felt good about himself, good about his body. The ball was falling to him in the, in the right areas of pitch. But to do that in the 94th minute when we're two one down and put it right in the top corner with that craft and that quality, um, massive for himself. I've been pleased with Chris. People forget about his start to life at Rugby United didn't do pre-season with us in terms of playing capacity so has been playing catch-up in a league campaign and I've not been able to offset him I've not been able to rest him at all how he's got through body-wise is absolutely incredible and, and testament to him and credit to him um, and now his game's starting to really show On the subject of body-wise the last game of the three-game week and be loitering around that physio door waiting to hear news on different people but you mentioned post-match you're going to have to kind of balance people's performances with looking after their Yeah, um, we, we freshen the team up on Tuesday. We'll have to freshen it up again this weekend. Um, we're going to assess each one tomorrow, um, pick a team, pick a formation, pick a style, a system, um, one which allows us to have an easy. But all of a sudden, we've got more options in, in terms of the squad um, and off the bench, which has been huge for the last couple of games. So, you know, we're in a positive state of mind. Um, nothing drastic came back from Tuesday, injury-wise or medically-wise, which has happened time and time again this season. We are struggling or trying to get through a bit of illness within the camp. We had it with Fred last week. There's another couple of players off ill today. So I think that's doing the rounds, not just with ourselves, but across the board. We know Ipswich had a few problems with that. Um, so it's important post-Saturday we kind of just close this place down for a few days and, and let everyone rest and recover. Um, but hopefully we'll have as close to a, a stronger squad as we can at this stage of the season. It's so tough as well, isn't it? Because people see players play really well. You think you just want your best players out there. But at times you do have to kind of think about their welfare because you don't want anything long term coming off the back of this. Thing. Yeah, certainly in a free game week. Um, and... I never really refer to it, but the the data, the, the science which came back from Tuesday was the highest it's been this season. Now, so that's probably credit to Ipswich because they pushed us that far. Credit to the players for going that distance and to those levels and the amount of work they had to do. But there are some players certainly at risk. So we'll try and get the balance. Um, even if they don't start their play, play, play the game in some capacity. They'll be on the pitch at some stage and we might be in a position where we have a starting team. We can get to a certain point in the game and then bring off the freshness or bring on the freshness, which we have to be doing. One person that's probably under that spotlight a little bit at the minute, Daniel Ayala, who had a really good 60 minutes for you. Has he come through that OK? Yeah, so tight, um, stiff, um, natural. Um, that's almost his first pre-season game. Now to do that against Ipswich is an incredible thing to talk about, um, even not having the training time, which we would have hoped and expect for any professional player to have. But it's needs must. I was pleased with his, his contribution. Um, hopefully this is a start. And similar to what you've alluded to there, another player we have to be mindful of in terms of the body. So um, good to have that option. Um, good to have him in amongst it. He's been a credit to himself in terms of the way he's conducted himself and his attitude, um, his character around the place. Another good senior player for us all to rely on. Um, but that reliability has to be in a, a playing capacity first and foremost. So availability is going to be key for him and a few of us. Jamie Lindsay was got something tangible by being on the bench. Not sure he was 
100% ready to go, but at least it put a smile on his face and give everyone else a boost. Is he a bit yeah, worse now? Yeah, you, you heard the fans' reaction. Um, one of the biggest cheers of the night was when he, he ran down the touchline. He probably ran a little bit faster than he should have done um, because the plan was always to involve him in, in a non-playing capacity to a certain extent. Uh, we'll look to do the same, but he's had another couple of days training. Um, so he's getting closer and closer now. He'll be involved this weekend and then there's a, a period of almost 10 days where he can really push him to, to more limits or new limits and get him game ready. Um, but then once he is back in that capacity, then like so many of our players, managing him and using him um, and working him in certain moments of the game where we need Jamie Lindsay on the pitch. But to have him available, um, he's not been available since our, our first pre-season game, sorry, our second one post Parkgate. Um, it seems so long ago. Um, but I'm pleased for Jamie and his family more than anyone because he's been low um, naturally because he loves football and he loves the club Lee Peltier has been edging close has he got a chance for the week? yeah he trained today trained today um, so we'll assess him tomorrow um, barring no reaction to training today he's certainly available and Grant Hall is he there or thereabouts now? yes very close probably this weekend a little bit too soon only on training time um, if it was the last game of the season I'm sure he'd put himself forward or I'd put him in there um, but with what he's been through previously um, he probably needs the next 10 days to similar to Jamie Lindsay to get fully up to speed and get some training time game related aspects under his belt um, but great to have him out there on a daily basis and not to be doing part sessions that's always a, a frustrating time as a manager where they're almost there, but you can't use them. It's like seeing a sweet in front of you or something nice you want to eat in front of you where you can't quite have it just yet. You've got to wait a little bit longer, but you still know it'll taste really, really nice further down the line. Um, so that's a strange way to describe Grant Hall, um, but I think it's a fair assessment. I'm sure you know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, this question kind of goes against everything we've said so far in terms of managing people, but would it been the last game before the international break? Do you tell people to empty the tank a little bit, or is it still okay? So well, similar to what I've said, they kind of emptied it on Tuesday. Um, they, they always do. Um, bar the, the, the Sheffield Wednesday game, where we felt we didn't put enough out there, this group are never short of what they, they, they put on the pitch um, and what they leave on the pitch, to that matter. So we will be saying that, but you say that before every single game, and the players know that. Um, but they all will have a well-earned rest after it. Um, and then they have to then prepare themselves for a run, I think, 20-plus games all the way through to March with very little break. And you know what happens in the winter here, let alone in the championship season. So um, lots to look forward to. Um, but the first things first is a performance on Saturday. I'm sure you'd rather, I was saying, they've got a miserable home record, but it's pretty similar to us, what, for a decent home. So <laughs> yeah. what, what can we expect from them at the weekend? Oh, strong home team. Um, a strong squad, um, incredible team to prepare for as it is every week at championship level. Um, players across the board who can hurt you individually, very strong, athletic, dynamic team, move the ball well. Always seems a quick surface at Watford, despite the conditions, always seems quite tight in terms of how quickly it moves and how players are on top of you. Um, we have to relish that atmosphere um, and find a way of putting in a, a performance and a statement which says we're actually competing away from home. We did it at Southampton, we need to do it for longer this weekend and then hopefully we'll have a points return. And we've spoken about strikers getting confidence from goals but if you could get that first win this weekend it would just be such a massive lift wouldn't it? It'd be huge, huge um, because every time we go away from home the same questions come, the same discussion points, the same feeling the players have so the uh, earlier that happens the better for everyone um, and it would top off a really positive week um, the response from going behind the QPR and the, the late goal against us at Ipswich uh, the character was shown and the skill levels were shown um, I want to see that again and a little bit more this weekend and hopefully you know, possibly a monkey off our back in terms of a win Sam just a quick look back on recent form a good draw the other night yeah hard earned uh, draw plenty of goals in it and uh, I thought we'd lost it at the end when they obviously went and scored, but we stuck in there. Um, again, the subs made a massive impact for us. Um, come in and yeah, well, I think we got got the point, and I, th I think we deserved it in the end. Obviously, it's been going through a tough run, but to go to so with a team like Ipswich, who have got such attacking powers, must be a real confidence booster. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I think watching a few games before as well. Every time a, a, a big team or one of the so-called big teams that's, that's at the top come to our place and, and play, they always find it difficult. Um, that's great testament to the lads, the, the fans, make it a tough place to come. And yeah, hopefully that, that can continue when we play the big teams. We can make it hard for them and, and, and come out with some points. You mentioned the home form, you know you've got it in the locker, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with these big teams. It's just about trying to translate that to away from home now as well. Yeah, 100% and it starts this weekend. Obviously we've got a big game coming up, uh, Watford away. So it's got to start there. We, need to, we know we need to start picking up points uh, away from home. And like you said there, we just need to take our home form and the way we play at home, away from home, I don't know. 
it shouldn't be that hard when you think about it, but it just seems to be that way for us at the minute. When we go away from home, we don't put in the performances like we do at home, so we need to change that, and we need to change that sooner rather than later. I think we've not spoken to you since you signed. When you did sign, you were talking about how this season you wanted to get back to playing football because you missed so much last year. How have you found it so far? Yeah, I'm ha like I say, I'm just happy to be back in, back in playing football. Um, obviously, missed a lot. Of, I didn't do a, a pre-season anywhere, so it's just trying to build up the, min uh, the minutes and not do too much too soon and, and be out for a couple of weeks with li little injuries or something like that. So just taking my time. But yeah, I just need to get out there and play in and the more minutes I get, hopefully the, the game will come back to me and start playing a bit better. Played a, a few systems. You've played in a few areas of that midfield as well. How have you found kind of the, the versatile in there? I've been like that for most of my career. To be honest with you, I'm a player that just the manager just sticks me out there and play, and I'll I'll go and do a job for them out there. You know, so it's it's always a great attribute to have because you get out on the pitch a lot more and you seem to play a lot more games. But yeah, it would be nice to nail that down one position and, and play there. But if if I need to go and play in a different position, like I say, I'll go out there and I'll give 110% every every weekend. You knew the mission objective when you came in was first and foremost staying in the championship. As I said, it's been on a bit of a tough run, but is there enough in there to believe that you think you've got a real chance of achieving what you want to this season? Yeah, 100%. Like I say, it's, it's more, if we produce the home form and the home home performance is away from home, then there's no reason why we can't. And I, I think we'll be fine. And I don't think we'll be in a, a relegation battle come the end of the season. But it's just trying to turn that form away. I don't know what it is, but we just need to turn it around quickly and, and start picking up points. I think once we get that first away win, I think that'll give all the boys a bit more confidence and and just winning breeds winning. I think you've seen that with with lots of Ipswich at the weekend. The score worldy and then they get uh, like a lucky ricochet, which just goes in, and that's what happens when you're in a, a winning streak and, you, and you're just winning every week. Things like that happen. So hopefully we can get start getting that kind of look and that kind of form. And like I say, it starts on Saturday. You never get too down up here at Brownwood, but it does feel like there's a bit of a feel good factor around the place after a couple of decent results. Yeah, it's always the same at every place. To be honest with you. People don't, fans don't see that side of footballers. They just see what what happens at the weekend and stuff. But from my person point of view, and from what I seen from the other lads, when when you lose, it's it's not a nice place to be. It's quiet. It's dull. You'll know that from being around the place. And everyone at home is the same. My friends and family get the same treatment as well. We don't talk to anyone. It hits us hard because at the end of the day, we're sportsmen and we, we won't go out there to win. There's not one person that doesn't go out there to win, so it definitely affects you. But on the other hand, when you're winning and you're picking up points, it's a great feeling to come in. Everyone's bouncing. You could be in at five o'clock in the morning on Monday morning, and it doesn't really matter. The lads will come in bouncing, so it's important. And like I said, we just need to keep that keep that home form going and, and, and try and replicate it away. What for at the weekend? It was a perfect start. Of course, you'd be looking for the same again. Score after three minutes really helps, but a fast start will be important away from home, won't it? Yep, definitely. Fast start. We need to go. Like I say keep saying it but the, the home form we need to do that away from home we need to go press high be aggressive try and win the ball back and, and play our game don't worry about too much about them we know what their strengths are we know they've got good players and they're a good team but we need to go there concentrate on ourselves and, and go there before the game started we've already got a point so if we can hang on to that and try and nick three then even better you kind of have to manage your body and look after your body like everyone else with the three game weeks that come but Knowing the international break is coming after, is this a good opportunity to go and kind of empty the tank at the weekend? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, we've got a few days off after after this game. Um, it's nice to have a little break and then we've got a really busy period coming into Christmas. So it's going to be important. We've got a lot of lads coming back from injury now. The squad's starting to look a bit bigger and they're having an impact as well. You've seen that when the players are coming off the bench. We've got a good squad. Players are coming off the bench and making a real impact, which is always a positive for, for the lads and, and for the manager as well. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a big weekend for us. Like I say, we need to go out there and just give... 110% like we always do and hopefully we can get, get a good result.